Hello my fellow tarot lovers. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. I have a couple of great tarot items to share with you today that I recently purchased. Um, over the Mother's Day weekend, my husband and my daughter both gave me a prepaid credit card as a gift for Mother's Day. And I used it this past weekend for a couple of great tarot items. And I got a tarot deck, which is the Raven's Prophecy Tarot by Maggie Steve Vader or Maggie Steve Vader, however you pronounce that. Pardon me if I'm botching the pronunciation. And then the other thing I purchased was the Tarot Coloring Book by Teresa Reed, who I'm sure many of you know if you are watching this. If you're a tarot fan, tarot lover, you know who she is. And it's a really, really great uh, item. So um, let's go through them. I'll start with the deck and um, talk about it with you. Okay, so this deck, let me talk about this deck for a moment. Uh, this deck came out in 2015 and I saw many people reviewing it and kind of doing walkthroughs on their channels. And um, I got to be honest, when I first saw this deck, I didn't like it. It didn't draw me in at all. It didn't call to me. It was, it's really um, not the typical deck for me because as you'll see on the back of the box, they have several images of the cards and it's very dark. It's very almost sort of goth, gothic looking and it's really not the typical deck that I'm sort of drawn towards, but I noticed I kept seeing this deck at a Chapters Indigo in uh, here in Toronto where I live. Uh, Chapters Indigo is a Canadian bookstore. And I kept seeing it there and every time I was there I would pick it up and look at it. And over time it was the strangest thing. It started to really grow on me. And um, I started to really think about purchasing it. And so when I got those gift cards I was like, okay. I was there at the store, there it was, and I was like, I'm getting it. And I'm so glad I did because it's, an, it's a really brilliant deck. It's really beautiful. I love its simplicity. I love its starkness. And it really can pack a wallop. Some of these cards can really pack a wallop. And then others are just so, I don't know, it's just very, I love the artwork. I love the way that she has chosen to um, depict the cards in her own way. And uh, so let's go through them and I will talk about them with you. I'll show you some, of, I'll show you all the major arcana and I will show you some of my favorite minors. So before I start showing you the cards, I'll just show you the really nice book that comes with it. It's called Illuminating the Prophecy. It's a really nice book, good size. There's the thickness of the book. It has um, 184 pages. And when I first opened it and was looking at the info, this, this uh, line here just automatically just drew me. Uh, where is it again? Sorry, it's the about, here we are, about the author. So it says, Maggie Steve Fodder's life decisions have revolved around her, her inability to be gainfully employed. Now that like got my heartstrings right away because that's me in a nutshell as well. I'm the kind of person who has never like fit in with the traditional nine to five um, typical job. Like it's never, it's never like been me. It's never been something I've been comfortable with or wanted to do or just felt drawn towards. So right away that was like, okay, girl, you know, we are one of a, we are two of a kind here. Um, says talking to yourself, staring into space and coming to work in your pajamas are frowned upon when you're a waitress, calligraphy instructor, or technical editor, all of which she's tried. And that's me too. Like I've, I've gone from job to job, drifted from job to job, and none of them stuck. None of them made me want to stay. So I could really relate to that. But anyway, um, this is a great book. Um, for the here's the major arcana there's a black and white image of the card on the page there's a good description of the card a definition and then another thing that i like is that she goes into why she chose to illustrate them in the way that she did so she talks about why the cards look the way they do and why she chose to you know draw them a certain way so it's a really really great book so let's go through the major arcana so here is the fool and this is what I mean by the simplicity. Like, I love the simplicity of this deck. It's such a simple image. There's not a lot going on, but it definitely gets the message across. You know, here's this girl who's standing on some kind of surface and she's got her arms raised and she looks like she just wants to dive right into the world. Very fool-like energy, right? So love that. Here's the magician. And again, I, it's so beautiful. Like, the um the etchings that you see on the hand there those are all the elements earth air water and fire and there's also an infinity symbol there as well so you you know the magician has all the elements there 
beautiful. Here's the High Priestess. I really love this card, how she's holding a magnifying glass and just looking at the world through that magnifying glass, which takes a certain amount of retreat, you know, and quiet and solitude to really look at something. Thought it really got that High Priestess energy. Here's the Empress, and I had to really look at this card for a while to find her, but um, her face is there in behind the trees, behind the branches, and I thought that was really nice. That really, really brings forward that nature element about the, about the Empress. Here's the Emperor. I love this one. Wow, that's really straight into the point. You know, you really get the message from this. It's sword through the crown. It's like the sword and the stone, you know, very powerful, very masculine, very... Um, take charge, you know. Here's the Hierophant, and I love how we, we, see, we see this lantern and then all the little lights around it, like all the little students, you know. I thought that was really nice. Oh, by the way, here's the back of the cards. I'm sure many of you have seen reviews of this, so you already know what they look like, but I'll just show you. Um, here's the Lovers, and here we have two stags of different colors, and their antlers are intertwined, and they're pressed together. Beautiful. Here's the chariot and here we see two dragons. There's a red dragon and a white one there. Representing those dual energies that are driving that chariot. I love this strength card. I love, love, love the strength card. It is so, I just love it. The way that that fist is clenched and you really get that feeling of like just firmness, like sticking to your your integrity, going with your integrity and sticking to it no matter what, you know, I love that. Here's the hermit, and I love that lantern in the cave there. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Here's the wheel. This one is not one of my favorites, but it's pretty. It's a pretty card. Not one of the ones that resonated with me more but it shows you the different seasons, the different leaves, the different foliage here represents the different seasons. And, you know, the wheel spinning, going through the different motions, always turning, always changing. Here's the justice card, and here we see a scale that is off balance. Here is the hanged man, and we see a hanged raven in this case. I really like how, um, like, it's sort of iridescent almost. Like, it's she's got a lot of rainbowy colors going on in here. So even though the deck appears dark, there's a lot of lightness in it, you know? Here's the death card. And I think, oh, this is such an amazing death card. I love that. I love, love, love this. So you can see sort of some of the rainbowy colors going on there on the skull. That crown, amazing. Here's Temperance, and I love this image. It's so serene and calm and, you know, just nice. It makes you feel good looking at this, you know. Here's the Devil, and I thought this was a very interesting Devil card, how we have the mask here on this person's face. I don't know if you can see it on the webcam here, but you can see a face behind the mask. So you know this person is wearing their mask, that, you know, the ego, the false self. Here is the tower, and we see a person standing in front of this conflagration here. Is that the right way to pronounce that? I don't know, but anyway, huge fire going on here. Here's the star, beautiful star card. Again, very peaceful, very serene. You know, just makes you feel like very calm and cool. Here's the moon, and I love how this raven has the moon in its beak. And you can see the rainbowy on the rainbowiness on the wings there. Here's the sun, and this person has this very bright glowy sun in their hands, cupping it in their hands. Here's judgment, and we see a crown on a book. And finally, the world. I love this world card. How we see the road that's just stretching on into infinity, you know, and there's also a road crossing it. So you have your choice of direction to go. You're starting on a new journey. I just really love this. I thought that's, this was a really brilliant depiction of the world. 
So let me show you some of my favorite All right, minor so arcana. here is the Knight of Wands, and here we see a sword that's just on fire. You know, you really get the, the sense this person is raring to go, and they're going to take no prisoners. Here's the Queen of Wands, and oh, I just love this. Look at those lips and the fire coming out of them. I just think that's amazing. Here's the Seven of Wands, and I really love this one, how that hand is over the flames and it's protecting it from the water, the rain that's falling. I just thought that was so awesome for the Seven of Wands, you know, like standing your ground and defending your territory, defending your views. I just love that. Here's the Knight of Swords, another awesome knight card, and we see scissors with blood on them. Yeah, that's Knight of Swords, all right. You know, this person can do a lot of damage and they um they can hurt they can hurt with their words right here's the eight of swords and i thought this was amazing how this um this hand is clenching this this other person's arm like you know holding them in place and you know restricting them i thought that was great here's the three of swords Ooh, see these like i said these cards some of these cards can really pack a wallop and we see here, literally, these are like nails. Nails are swords driven through this person's hand. And the blood dripping down. Yeah, that's pretty brutal, but to the point. And very accurate in its uh, illustration. Here's the page of coins. And I just thought this was really sweet. See, I love the simplicity here. Like, it doesn't take a lot of bells and whistles and a lot of stuff going on in a card to really give you... A sense of what the card's about and this is a perfect example here so we see this little budding plant in this pot for the page of coins here's the nine of coins and you can really see the rainbow uh, colors going on with this rose here I just thought this was so beautiful so beautiful and it says it all you know beauty luxury it just it just really gives you that sense of um, pleasure, you know, and just enjoying beauty and enjoying life. Here's the six of coins, and I thought this was really nice. We see a lot of cupped hands in this deck, and this, these hands are offering these roses to somebody. Very beautiful. Here's the nine of cups. Again, a lot of rainbowiness going on, and you can see all the ravens in the sky. They're just flying around, having a great old time, you know, so... Yeah, there's a really happy, happy vibe to this card. Here's the Two of Cups. Very similar to that Lover's card that I showed you from the Major Arcana. The two different colored ravens that are close together and snuggling together. And then finally, the Five of Cups. And I thought this was a really great depiction of the Five of Cups. It looks really sad and, and um, you know, gloomy. And... Um, I just thought it was awesome. So yeah, um, I, when I look back now, I'm surprised at how I really didn't like this deck at first when I first saw it, and it really didn't call me in, and now it's like, I just love it. I just absolutely love it. So that is the Raven's Prophecy Terror. I haven't worked with it yet, but I am looking forward to starting. So now let me show you the other tarot item okay, that I so got. Okay, so now let's talk about this tarot coloring book by Teresa Reed, who... Uh, has been in the tarot world for many, many years, and I believe she's also known as the Tarot Lady. Um, but um, this is amazing. Like Not only because it's a coloring book. Here, let me show you. Um, it's also spiralized, so it's really easy to open and work with. You know, you can just lay it on a table and work with it very easily, which I love. And so what it has is one page is a blown-up version of the Rider Waite uh, version of the card. So you've got lots of room to color, lots of room to play and move around. And also on the uh, other page, it has a description of the card. It tells you the element. Um, it gives you like kind of a summary line. And then it gives you a um, <clears throat> the upright definition and the reversal. But what I like about this the most is that it explains the symbology. So here it says, notice the symbols. Okay, and for the Seven of Swords, it's uh, the soldiers in the background and the colors that the Rider Waite version of the card use. So it explains what the... Um, 
what the soldiers in the background mean and what the colors uh, that the that Pamela Coleman Smith chose to use in the Rider Waite version, why she chose those colors and what they represent. So that is what I really like the most about this this book, actually, is that it gives you that information at a glance. And um, I think it's a really, really great resource to have for anybody who is studying the tarot. And also, when you're coloring, I mean, it's a really good opportunity to meditate on the card because it's going to take you a good amount of time and you're going to really be taking in everything on the card when you're doing the coloring, right? So I think it's a really good way to study a tarot card, to kind of absorb a tarot card, the energy of the card and the meaning of the card. And then you also have this great stuff on the other side here. Um, like I said, the definition, the reversal, and the symbols. So for the Ten of Pentacles, the uh, symbols here are the archway, the family, and again, the colors. So as we all know, anyone who uh, studies tarot or who uses tarot knows that these, the everything on the card is there for a reason. It's not just a random pretty picture. Pamela Coleman Smith chose these uh, images to use in the card for a very specific reason. And um, I think it's really great that, you know, we just have all this here at a glance. So I really, really love this and I'm looking forward to using it. And it's definitely going to be, I'm going to kind of make this into like a tarot journal. You know, I'm going to put all my own notes in here. I'm going to put the astrological associations for each card so I can see all this stuff at a glance. Let me show you some more. Here's the seven of wands. So here's the seven of wands. And uh, the symbols that she talks about here are the mismatched footwear and, again, the colors. Let's see what else here. Six of Cups. There's the Six of Cups. And the symbols she talks about here are the house. The house represents security. The watchman. The watchman seems to be patrolling the garden. What is he keeping in or out? Symbol of protection. The flowers in the cup. What's blossoming here? The, blo the bloom of youth or something growing out of seeds planted long ago. So I really, really love this. I am going to have a lot of fun. I would this. highly recommend this book to any tarot beginner or even people who are, you know, we're all learning. We're always learning. Even if we've been doing the tarot for several years, there's always more to learn. So I would recommend this to anybody who loves the tarot, but especially to beginners because it's really going to help you learn a card. And also at the back here, she's got a... Um, a tarot uh, quick interpretation so quick very like quick brief uh, descriptions of each card a summary of each card and then she also has how to come up with a good tarot question so she guides you through how to ask the right questions um, how to form a question uh, in, in, a, in the best way and yeah I just think it's a really really great resource for anybody who um, loves the tarot or is interested in learning about the tarot. So highly, highly recommend this. And of course, I highly recommend the Raven's Prophecy Tarot as well. It's an awesome deck. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed my uh, show and tell with you. And I will see you again soon. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share if you did enjoy the video. Thanks, guys. Mwah. Bye for now.